As many of you who are, who are invested in Tesla are aware, the bros at Seeking Alpha, and to be honest, many of the bros on Wall Street, still keep claiming that Tesla is just a car company. And that's why they have these rankings. I saw them today, in fact, yesterday. In fact, these rankings are posted constantly. Car companies, Tesla, valuation, worth 10 times more than everyone else. When it's not really, but you see my point. Everyone says Tesla is overvalued because it's simply a car company and it's nothing more than that. Is that actually true? Well, I would like to ask those of the bros who are doing this financial estimation on their websites where they claim you need to pay a subscription for their expert advice, why they don't calculate this kind of information into their advice. It's really quite baffling to me. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Yes, of course, Tesla is not just a car company. And um, actually, they've been doing a lot of other things for a long time now. They sell batteries, energy storage, not just energy storage. They sell lots of things. Now, solar, I don't think is a big part of the business that will be successful in the future. There's just too much competition in that segment. But being an energy supplier, I believe will be one of Tesla's biggest sources of revenue. Tesla are setting up virtual power plants all over the world. Eventually, Tesla will become one of the largest distributors of power worldwide. That's really, in my opinion, simply a matter of time before everyone has their own batteries. And not only that, their own cars that they'll use as a battery at home. Why not? Why wouldn't you do this to save you money? So that's the future of energy. But the future of gasoline stations is obviously electric. And now it seems as though finally analysts are starting to see what we've all been seeing for a very long time. Tesla will access up to 20 billion in revenue from supercharger deals, says Dan Ives from Wedbush. Now, fortunately, Dan Ives is one of the smarter analysts out there. He does include these kinds of numbers in his estimations of Tesla's worth. He does say Tesla doesn't just do one thing. They have multiple avenues of revenue. Now, obviously, their energy division is growing much, much faster than their car division. And this is what Tesla predicted would happen. I've got to say, why is it? Why would people invest in companies, fund managers, take advice from these talking heads who simply refuse to acknowledge that this is a massive part of a disruption happening right now? I mean, what did we do before we had gasoline powered cars? What did we do? We probably had horses going around everywhere, right? I'm sure people had many, plenty of horse barns around selling, you know, water maybe and hay for the horses. And all of a sudden that changed. We went, we moved from that to gasoline stations. And now we're moving from gasoline stations to electric chargers. This is something that analysts seem to have just not realized is actually happening. Anyway, Tesla will receive around 20 billion in revenue from its recent supercharger deals with Ford, General Motors, and many other automakers, says Dan Ives of Wedbush. And it's not just many others. Everyone will come on board at some point in time. It would be a major problem for them if they didn't. I mean, think about this, right? Once the majority of the automakers who have already signed up, once their cars have NAX charges on them, surely you would think to yourself, do I want to buy an EV from a company that isn't going to do this? I mean, why would I want to do that? Why would I not want access to the best charging network in America, where in fact, often superchargers at, Amer at Tesla's charges, even though they're faster and they work better, often they're cheaper. In fact, in Europe, they're almost always cheaper than the competition. Gives you an idea, in my opinion, of what Tesla is doing here. Now, what Tesla is doing here is far greater than what Dan Ives from Wedbush actually realizes. Most analysts don't realize this. And if you're new to the channel, I'll let you in on something here that I've mentioned on this channel numerous times, and that is that Tesla is installing mega batteries under many of their locations across North America. What they will do is simply vert operate as their own virtual power plants. These power plants will supply you as a user of electricity. You'll come and charge your car. And what they'll also do is take energy out of the grid when it's free, which energy out of, in the grid is often free. In fact, often the grid will pay you to take energy out of the grid because there's too much energy in it. 
as renewable energy becomes a larger portion of electricity in the grid, electricity will be free more often. Now think about it, right? There'll be plenty of times, as there already is in many countries around the world, where energy is literally free. In fact, there's plenty of times where um, distributors now will try and turn off people's solar panels because they're sending too much electricity into the grid. So Tesla will simply take all that free energy or, or cheap energy when it's cheap, put it in their batteries and sell it to you at a premium price, probably about 100 times the price, if not 200 times the price that they pay for it when it's really cheap. Not to mention, they'll sell it back to the grid when the grid has peak operation prices. So when the grid is, prices are high, say that might be say 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. when the sun goes down and everyone comes home, everyone starts turning on their air conditioners or their heaters or whatever it may be, Tesla will sell it back to the grid. They're already doing that as part of virtual power plants with you. You're buying their batteries, their cars and operating as part of their VPPs. Instead, this is their way of doing it themselves. And Tesla has a big advantage here. They have those battery systems. They have the actual software to make all of this work. So yes, it's true, Tesla has an amazing supercharged network, but it's worth far more than what Dan Ives realizes at $20 billion. I would estimate it more than double that because imagine this scenario. Imagine if you were to say have Shell and BP and Shell and BP had cornered the entire gasoline market just, just for the sake of comparison here. But say Shell pays $1 per liter of gasoline. And then say BP pays 20 cents per liter of gasoline. How long do you think it would take BP to put Shell out of business? They could undercut them by 50% and make a very healthy profit in the process. That is the real situation that's going on here, my friends. And that is exactly why the big seven now exists. Now the big seven is seven car manufacturers, seven big ones in North America have join together to try and build out their own fast charging network. Now, I think it's a little bit too late. I do. I really think it's a bit too late for them. And it's a great idea, but they should have started doing this years ago because by the time they actually get their shit together, which will take a long, long time, decide what they're going to use, where they're going to do, where they're going to install these charges, what technology they're going to use, what the app is they're going to use, and actually get started on all of this well, you can imagine just how far ahead Tesla will be. Now, Tesla will pay a very, very low price to actually install their chargers. They have technology that is much cheaper than the competition when it comes to their charging costs, not just their cost to charge, but their cost to install their actual chargers. I think the Big Seven, great idea, and I'm sure they'll have some portion of the network. It just won't be a major competitor to Tesla. So Tesla's supercharger network is clearly the most robust, the most reliable, the constant, consistently fastest, and the most expansive on the planet. And earlier this summer, it gained enormous attention when it struck deals with various automakers to allow their EVs access to charging infrastructure starting in spring of 2024. Now remember, Tesla won't just profit from these automakers and from customers using the superchargers and from electricity networks, there's a lot of different revenue streams going on here, you can imagine. They'll also profit from the government. The government is offering billions of dollars in subsidies as long as you install the option of having a, basically an option of being able to charge with CCS and NAX charging. Now, because Tesla has the option now of giving you a CCS charger to use, they've covered that segment, but also they need to have a digital screen on their chargers. So Tesla's new chargers will have this digital screen that will enable people to pay with a credit card, make it easy to check out, but also that means Tesla will apply, be able to get subsidies to continue to build out their supercharger network. Aptera was the first to access Tesla's North American charging standard or NACS connector. And in fact, Aptera was very, very vocal about the fact that they were doing this. They really stuck their heads out. Full kudos to Aptera. By the way, I have pre-ordered an Aptera EV. I'm hoping when they actually hit production, they can send it to Australia for me. And I'm very excited about that EV. But anyhow, Aptera were very vocal. I think a lot of people criticized them for this. They mocked Aptera. They said, oh yeah, you're just loving Tesla. Or you're just sort of sniffing Elon Musk's butt. I, I saw people make comments like that. And I thought, are you serious? Like, People say this kind of stuff, but they did. All of a sudden, those people are now pretending they never made those comments. 
Now, if you actually approach some of these people, you can see the comments online and you said to them, hey, I remember you said this about Uptera. You said that they were just being like, you know, um, wannabes by trying to, you know, cozy up to Tesla. Uh, why is it that all these other major manufacturers now are doing the same thing? But these people say, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Something like, along those lines. Anyhow, Uptera, very smart decision. And then, of course, Jim Farley and Ford, they've really got everything moving and other automakers followed suit. These partnerships then catalyzed various other automakers, including Rivian, Volvo, Polestar, and of course, recently the first Japanese automaker, Hyundai and Acura, to use NAX. Now this NAX charger adoption will bring Tesla some major revenue through the rest of the decade, says Dan Ives from Wedbush. So how will this actually happen? This is what Ives said to his investors. The dive, to dive deeper into this sum of the parts valuation, we modeled and projected out Tesla's supercharger network, taking into account access and revenues from other OEMs using stations across the United States. Ultimately, we estimate that Tesla's supercharger business will be roughly three to 6% of total revenues, translating to 10 to $20 billion business by 2030. Now, I think it's worth significantly more than that for the reasons that I mentioned. The key reason is that Tesla will pay very, very little money for the product that they're selling, electricity. And I mentioned why that is earlier. I always wrote in the note that while the supercharger network opening to OEMs is a major part of the Tesla story, it's only one part. Strong production figures, a thriving energy business, continuous improvement on the side of the development of autopilot and full self-driving, and an unmatched battery ecosystem and increased production and scale scope are all contributing to a strong financial sheet balance sheet for Tesla. He said, we believe Tesla is in a prime position to further capitalize on the EV transformation taking place as part of the government's plan to reduce carbon emissions to zero by 2050. Now, he went on to mention the Cybertruck. I'm not going to get into that because you've all heard about the Cybertruck many, many times. However, he did point out there is more than 2 million reservations for the Cybertruck. And if even 50% of people cancel, that's still 1 million reservations, uh, significantly more than any other car maker has had for any car in history. He said, while preparing for the launch in full year Q... He said, while preparing for the launch in FY. 3Q23, the Cybertruck puts Tesla in a great position to capitalize on the growing need for electric pickups with the electric truck market growing at 31% CAGR through 2032. I firmly believe that Tesla's major source of revenue, and when I say revenue, I mean, you know, if you make and sell a car, it's sort of a crappy transaction because you make a profit, and then you, you don't get much after that. And that's why General Motors, BMW, Mercedes, all these car companies are saying, we're gonna sell you a service. We're gonna sell you heated seats. And they are, you gotta pay $7 a month or something to have heated seats in your BMW and your Mercedes. I can't believe luxury car buyers think that's a luxury service. Like that's a joke in my opinion, but they're doing that now. And because, it's because they realize the, the, the Netflix idea, right? The Apple subscription idea, subscribe to get Apple Music, the subscription thing makes you a lot more money in the long run versus just one transaction of selling a single iPhone, making a profit, and then that's it. Yeah, you made a profit on the transaction, but it's what comes after that that matters more than anything else. And that's why Tesla is not simply a car manufacturer. Their, mo their business model is more based around what comes after the transaction. And having these supercharged network it's not only a tool to make money from people, customers, whether that's the car companies or even the actual owners of the cars themselves, but it's also a tool to get new customers and to get their data. Data is worth billions of dollars. Once you've used Tesla Supercharger Network, most likely Tesla will have your data. They'll know a fair bit about you and they'll be able to market services, products, cars, all kinds of things to you in the future. Maybe SpaceX, maybe the new X platform, I don't know, but whatever it may be, that is a very powerful tool to have. And it's something that other car makers won't have the ability to do. 
What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.